Well, for more on overseas markets, we're joined now by Ashraf Lady. He's Chief Executive Officer of Intermarket Strategy, and he joins us from London. Ashraf, good to see you again. I know that uh, the stress test results have been released in the UK, and I believe all seven major financial institutions passed those stress tests. Uh, how how uh, healthy are the UK are the UK banks at this juncture? Yes, uh, all of them passed the test. Five of five of the seven have the necessary the capital. Uh, two of them, I believe, it's RBS and Standard Chartered, uh, need a little bit of work. Uh, nothing market moving with that. Uh, what is interesting is what the Bank of England is not. It's not what it's saying about the about the banks, but what it's saying about um, about. Uh, Inflation earlier of last month, the Bank of England rocked the sterling market, drove down uh, gilt yields down, the sterling down when it revised aggressively its uh, forecast for GDP growth and for inflation. They have now uh, uh, one, uh, two consecutive months of deflation. The sterling is falling across the board. It's even falling against that currency called the loonie, which is not <laughs> doing so well. And... Um, and today we have the purchasing managers index in the manufacturing sector. Uh, it had its biggest decline uh, in, uh, uh, in two and a half years. Uh, so not all is going well for the British pound. And I think the FTSE, this is for guys who like overseas equity markets, the FTSE had a positive December in the last, I believe, 10 years. But last year was an exception. It actually went down. And I think we are going to see further declines in the FTSE ahead. Ashraf, it's Paul Harris here. Just uh, the ECB, I mean, I think people are expecting them to do something. Uh, do you, uh, I mean, obviously extending QE, but do you think that, you know, with rates so low there already, do you think they're going to have to buy other types of assets, other corporate debt or some other mm -hmm. type of asset there? Not so sure. You said obviously in your question. I'm not so <laughs> sure they're going to ex uh, uh, they're going to expand uh, QE. But I, I think what you said was extend. So I okay. think you might be correct because I would agree with you. Uh, I think they would extend the duration of QE, not expand the size, um, uh, because uh, they have issues uh, and uh, uh, you know in, in finding the assets. They're even talking about uh, choosing uh, you know the municipal bonds. I think a rate cut in the deposit rate by 20 basis points is, is not going to have that oomph uh, uh, on equities. Let's look at this this way. When there is a car, it goes from zero to, five, uh, to 10 miles an hour, you will notice the acceleration. When it goes from 10 to 20, you will notice. When it goes from 60 to 70, you won't notice. So they are doing 60 billion a month. If they, if they will, I don't, and I don't think they will do that, but if they increase that to to 70 billion, it will not have the necessary boost for equities or for DAX to be rallying. And the DAX right now is outperforming uh, most G10 equities in the last month on those expectations. So I think that simply uh, a rate cut is, um, is just going to do the favor for the ECB to drive down yields down, the euro down. I think the euro is going to uh, drop in a rapid manner, but not in a lasting manner. So we're going to have a quick drop towards 10, uh, 104, 103. And uh, the 10 year yield in the bond yield in Germany may reach towards a negative level, but not below that. But I do not think that they're going to, uh, to expand QE. Let's not forget, the IFO survey, the sentiment survey in Germany is, is at a 17-month high. Uh, the CPI is well off its highs. Uh, the PMI surveys are doing well. This is not March 2015 when things were so bad that they had to go all in. Has quantitative easing w worked then to the degree that you cite those economic uh, indicators? Has the, has the initial tranche, if you will, <coughs> of European quantitative mm. easing had the desired effect? When you would ask the same question about the United States, there would be a lot of no's. But when you would ask the same question about the ECB, I think given the program that finally, after a lot of waiting, started in March 2015, I think you may have results. Why? Because when they started, inflation was minus 0 0.6. Now it's uh, uh, plus 0.1. It could go up to plus 0.2. Core CPI is a 1%. The IFO survey and Germany and other economies are doing okay. And Germany has gone beyond the sanctions from Russia and so on. So I think it has worked. Uh, obviously, you know, uh, I think that what Yellen is going to do, uh, if, they, if they will raise rates, uh, that may keep the euro weak. But I think the eurozone economy can still do well, even when the euro is slightly higher at 110 or 111. 
Ashraf, always good to speak to you. Thank you very much for making time for us this morning. Thank you. That's Ashraf Lady from London.